Hi, I'm Morgan Ray. Welcome to episode 16 of Art V. On this program, Tony Bove will talk to artist Cinda Manins, and I will be chatting to Enzo Benincasa about her new gallery. But first, Tony Bove is with us now to talk about his art, which is all about astrology. Welcome, Tony. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Well, let's jump right into it. I see you brought some lovely symbols. Can you tell us what is the meaning behind these? Well, uh, these symbols, and the majority of these ones, uh, except for the front one, which is the tiger, that's an east. But the rest, and what I want to talk about today, is the Western symbols. And they the, are uh, the ancient symbols of Western astrology signs. So, yeah, I've uh, done a uh, selection of those, the 12 symbols, and also the four elements of fire, earth, air, and water. So tell us about these symbols and how it relates to your passion. Um, well, I think I was around 25 and I went travelling to Europe um, and life had been you know, all right, but uh, a bit of a hiccup there, uh, losing some friends and family. So I got a little bit despondent and I started uh, just having that good old think about what am I meant to do with my life? What do I want to be? In a way, I was looking for hope and direction. Um, and I stumbled across some astrology books, I think I was in London, and I just found myself buying another one and, and looking at different astrologers uh, and seeing if there was any common ground. So I did, um, oh, over two years, I did a lot of research on all of the symbols and the ancient meaning and the development of them. And I realised that a lot of the uh, current day uh, astrologers, or horoscope columnists, etc., I should have just stopped with the ancients because every time I looked at everyone else's uh, words and research, it was as if they'd all copied it and dragged it all from the ancient meaning anyway. So really I wanted to bring them right, a series right back to what the symbols stood for according to the ancients. Give you everyone a reminder of the positive attributes um, that are with us if we choose to use them. Great. Can you tell us a bit more about the positive side, because that is yep. your perspective, correct? Very much promoting the positive side, because uh, I'm tying in this series um, in a way to promote the age of Aquarius. Uh, so we're in 2021 now. Uh, it's, it's a great year. Apparently the age of Pisces, it's 2000 year, great block or great year itself is coming to an end. So the age of Aquarius, it's not the dawning of anymore. So I thought, well, how can I reach people to promote such a a, a, a beautiful message which has been predicted um, and I thought well Age of Aquarius I can use the uh, astrology symbols to try and connect with each other and then promote everything that's um, positive uh, for them to know that they can make a difference just by remembering that some of their characteristics and attributes are very powerful um, and they can empower the person to be uh, a better individual in today's world and uh, hopefully a little bit more caring, considerate, and aware that the age of Aquarius is coming and change is coming. And we're probably it. We're the generation to drive it. Great. Yeah. Now, you mentioned prediction, and that kind of lit yeah. me up. Yeah. What is your prediction with these symbols? Uh, well, I, these are my very last test prints before I go back to the printer for the final ones. Prediction for these, I'm hoping to see them up on some walls uh, in, in some galleries. I'm going to sell a small range just downstairs in the, the uh, downstairs here at the Alex Theatre and just starting with some um, short little cards which be, make for lovely prints. And they're quite informative because they flip them over and when I get them I'll bring them in and show you but it's everything positive uh, and especially using the ruling planet, um, the element, the power of the element. And of course, the, always I mentioned a little bit about the symbol. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Tony. No worries. Thanks very much for having me.
Rosa Benincasa is a well-known artist who has exhibited in many galleries in Australia and in many parts of the world, including Italy. Hi, Enza. Welcome to the show and, and welcome back because you've joined us before. Yes, I have. Nice to see you, Morgan. Likewise. Normally we're in a different setting, so it's pretty exciting to uh, be here today. Yeah. Well, thanks again for bringing some of your art. Can you tell us what's been going on with you since we last saw you? Right. Well, last time that I was here, it was um, we were in lockdown from COVID. So uh, for me, it was a great time because um, it gave me time to um, think about my art, what I want to do, reassess my whole way of being. Um, and so I put all my energy into that and um, something I just something just um, just came up. No, 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 it didn't just come up. We planned to um, have a studio for myself. Mm -hmm. So because I was working from home and my partner was um, uh, falling over canvases and everything. And he said, look, I'd like to um, get, you know, pay for an art studio. So I was really thrilled and went around uh, to look for a studio. But what came up was um, a lovely little store with um, a window. So, and that was facing the new Pride Centre in St Kilda. So I thought, what a great opportunity and um, for me to do my art, but also to show my art and also to be in contact with people, um, which is very important for me and um, to, you know, sort of live off that energy and I've got a lot of energy. So it was a great um, thing for me to share and take that, um, take that opportunity. So um, I've got a new shop in uh, Jackson Street, St Kilda. That's at 75 Jackson Street, St Kilda, and that's where I met you. So a lot of people come by and, um, and a very exciting place for a lot of things to happen. So Enza, can you speak a bit about what's been going on in your gallery? Sure. Like, how are you entertaining everyone? Well, um, pretty easy for me because I actually just um, go off another person's energy and, um, and just do sort of grow naturally. So um, I love to include people in my, either in my own work or to, to do stuff collaboratively. And as an example, when you came into my store for the first time, a lovely girl, we just had a chat and you told me that you were a script writer. So I thought, wow, what a good idea to use Morgan in the shop, in the front window, and maybe to read some of your scripts and get people to read some of your scripts. So as an example, we've done that. We had a great show a couple of weeks ago where um, we had a COVID safe environment because we were doing the play within the store, but the people who were passing by could see the actors acting while they were walking by or just standing by. So that was just a great innovative thing. Um, and I also have my artworks um, as part of the backdrop and it's, um, it's an art gallery, but it's also my studio. So you can actually see me painting inside there and I make uh, all kinds of art. So I do some more traditional or realistic kind of art. And what we have here today is something that I've just started while I've been in the shop and it's just more energetic, um, abstract, bubbly, um, maybe happy because I'm at a happy time of my life with this new business that started and so that might reflect that and also it's in a different format I've been using um, paint drop sheets because um, I just love seeing this big um, area of fabric and um, but also I sort of started thinking of, of um, having them like that because I've been sort of influenced by all the refugees and um, the natural disasters that are happening. And I just sort of think when these things happen, we don't have our homes anymore. So these artworks that are all in frames or whatever, can we quickly take them with us if we have to go? Or maybe this can be used as a rug. It can be used as a cover. It can be used as a shelter. These are small and I've got very large ones, which you have seen and we've used as our props in the gallery. Right, these are incredible and I've had the pleasure of watching you work on them and how much time and energy and sometimes you don't even know what it's going to become. No. Can you tell us a bit more about your process? Yeah, 
Well, I there's what I do is I put a lot of layers down, and I work until I feel that they're finished. And most times I don't feel like they're finished. So if I leave them there and I come back tomorrow, I'll put something else on them. But it's about you know layering, uh, feeling the energy that I pick up of the work, and maybe something that I want to um, feel or bring out. And these are sort of like um, exuberant, um, festive, um, and that kind of feeling which I have been feeling actually during COVID and this wonderful breakthrough after COVID or while well, you're still in COVID. So for me, it's been a pretty um, productive time for myself and also with other artists that come through and people that I meet through this shop. It's, mm. it's quite wonderful. Um, so speaking of the shop, what's next? What's going on in your gallery and studio? Well, um, tonight we're having rehearsals for your script reading. And on the 20th, we've actually got um, a performance of your script. So looking forward to that. And so are the people that have already come by and, see it, and seen it. So we've got that. Also, um, I will be hopefully, have, I'd like to have an open day even though it's open every day so people can come and see me every day except sunday um and did i give the address 75 yes. jackson street even though it's on fitz it, the actual shops on jackson street 75 a jackson street but it's just behind 7-eleven on fitzroy street which is not far from here and you're quite active on instagram so how can people follow what you're doing and and watch you yeah from afar yeah so um uh, from Instagram, uh, and I've been I've been doing it for a while, but it, I sort of did more during COVID because it was a way of uh, reaching out to people. And now with the shop, that's another way of reaching out to people. Uh, so my Instagram is my Instagram site is Enza Benincasa Artist, and you'll be able to find me there, or you can go to my website, which is Enza Benincasa. Um, and you can see what I'm doing and also you can buy um, online off there and I'm doing a new e-commerce um, site to help with sales. And also you can either just talk to me or come into the shop and um, I love talking to people and, and seeing what else can come or what we can do together. Great. And that's by making an appointment or do they need to book a time? Um, preferably that would be great so I can give you all my time you know, my designated time to you. So either you can, um, you know, email me or telephone me or come into the shop um, and we can make a time and have a chat. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Enza. Pleasure. Thank, thank you so much, Morgan. We look forward to seeing what's next for thank you. Thank you. Tony Beauvais with artist Cinder Manon's. Cinder Manon's work is largely process driven, with narratives addressing the harsh beauty of ancient eroded landscapes and imagined dystopian futures. And Cinder joins me now. Hi Cinder, thanks so much for coming in. Hi Tony. Great to have you here. Now, you were originally a Bayside girl from around Port Phillip? Yeah, I grew up in Black Rock actually. Okay, I lived in Bowie for a while. Yeah. Um, 
and then you headed to central Victoria for a while? Yeah, just um, on a whim. I applied for uni there and went up there because my girlfriend said it was fun. Yeah. Um, and I did my first degree up there. Okay, back in Melbourne now, though? Back yeah, in uh, back Port in Melbourne, yep. yep. Oh, terrific. Where was the uni? Was that uh, Ballarat? Yeah, Ballarat Uni at the time. Now it's Federation Uni. Federation Uni, yeah. yeah. Did a, um, I did a job up there in um, 2017, I think. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant up there. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, now, you studied the Bachelor of Fine Art and Ceramics. Is that where you did that? Yes, I yep. did. It was wonderful. And then you went on and you also studied a Bachelor of Degree in Anthropology and Media. Oh, I did that first in the, in the 90s. Wow, yeah. Um, so what about 100 years ago. What was that about? The anthropology bits got me interested. Anthropology is um, the different ways people organise culture in different societies. Right. Okay. So. I th I'll come back to that because you've mentioned that. Um, I've seen that in a bit of your profile that I looked at. But to finish off with your diplomas, grad, uh, graduate diplomas in museum studies. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 2017. That was a wonderful course. Yeah. Um, largely focused on cultural heritage. Um, and a lot about collection management. Right. But you do have a, a bit of a running um, theme throughout your work of uh, working with cultures um, to be visually and independently promoted. I think it's really important for people to feel represented. Um, and I think we've seen a lot of that in the last decade or so with the rise of social media and the internet giving people a voice. Yeah. Um, so it's important to be heard and people have always expressed themselves visually and that's what we do with art. Um, we're communicating through art. Uh, I guess art reflects society back on itself um, and that's what I'm talking about with representation as well. Sure. Yep. Now, um, just quickly, just want to finish off your education. Did you do another course just recently? Yeah, I did. I, I actually finished on Friday. I've done a CELTA course. It's the Certificate of English Language Teaching to Adults. Oh, right. Yeah, so okay. looking forward to travelling in the future and maybe working overseas so that I can extend my stays. Well, that'll help with uh, all communications, that's for sure. Yep. <laughs> now, back in 2011 or thereabouts, is that when you were, you, you were awarded a, a prize for ceramics? Yes, that's right, the Clune Ceramic Award. That's right. Um, I was lucky enough to both have my work accepted and then win an Emerging Artist Award, um, which was very, very exciting. I was in second year at uni and the work was purchased by the Art Gallery of Ballarat. My work's called Flow and it's, Flow. Um, it's a porcelain work yep. um, and it represents glacial forms in the Antarctic. It's made of southern ice porcelain, which is appropriately named. Yes, um, <laughs> that's what I wanted to talk with you about because a lot of the work I've had a look uh, at, marvellous stuff. Thank you. But um, the southern ice porcelain, uh, explain the difference. What's Why Southern Ice? Uh, southern Ice is called Southern Ice, uh, I think, because of its superior whiteness, right. um, which is what I enjoy about it. Um, typical of porcelains, it's a very fine clay. It's very difficult to work with. Um, and, well, the, the qualities that people usually exploit in porcelain are the translucency. So if you work it very thinly, um, you can shine light through it mm -hmm. um, and its smoothness. Uh, and I was working along those lines, but these days I'm using it differently um, and exploring how it cracks on the surface easily. So that's one of its um, difficulties for most ceramicists is that it does crack, but I'm trying to work with that in bringing out the cracks. Cool. Mm. Uh, I want to ask you about something else because as a, uh, working with ceramics all the time, I've had my day many years ago playing with kilns. Yep. Now, you've got your own kiln. Is yes. that at home? Stu no, it's at Gasworks. It's at, Gas at your studio at Gasworks? Yep. Now, I've had a look at that. That looked pretty heavy. Yeah, it was pretty heavy. When did you get that? Uh, uh, I bought it, I think, last August, so just over a year ago. Wow. And it's very exciting. It's my first kiln, and it's actually the first time since I bought it that I've started to learn to fire on my own. Um, at uni, it's all highly supervised because it's d dangerous. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's probably about 100 and 
60 kilos or something. I've, uh, we've got some images to show how the manpower involved manpower. to uh, <laughs> get it off the back of the trail. <laughs> Several men, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, now, obviously, because you do work with uh, the landscape as well, mm -hmm. um, and given the current issues with the environment, yes, um, uh, climate change, yes, you still somehow remain to be optimistic with uh, your, your, your working with these mediums yes. in these times due to you know mankind's exploitation of the land, and yep. so you're still trying to turn that positive that negative into the positive. You could say that. Um the optimism is on behalf of the planet, not so much, unfortunately, on behalf of humanity. I can understand that. Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to wipe ourselves out eventually. <laughs> the fate of all species. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I've realised the planet is, is greater than us, much greater, and will endure, um, albeit in another form as uh, the biodiversity diminishes, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the messages that I'm trying to relate through my current work. Um, now, you also gave a speech not long ago, it was very recent, wasn't it? Just last week, I yeah. think, at Gasworks, yeah. What was that about? Was that incorporating this similar message? Yes, yes, ultimately it was. It was, oh. an, it was an artist talk that I was invited to um, participate in the Twilight Open Studios evening, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was really the first time I've reconnected with my studio since lockdown because we've been out for months. Um, and it was a really good way to gather my thoughts and explore my philosophies and put it all together neatly in a written document. Sure. One, one of my work themes is um, make good choices is the, is the title. Um, so when I have a, a theme of work, I have one title for a whole bunch of work. Um, make Good Choices invites people, every individual, to consider the choices they make about their lives in the current moment and the impact it's going to have on the planet in the longer term. Yep. When people see your art for the first time, mm -hmm. how would you like people to feel? Uh, definitely engaged and curious and I would hope that it would make them think, so stimulate thought and questions. Yeah. Oh, mm. Great answer. Thank you. Okay, so if people would like to have a look at your stuff, obviously they can go through gasworks.org.au yep. and look up Cinder Manons. That's right. No, there's a blurb with a few images there, but uh, you've got Facebook page? Yes, I have, Cinder Manons Art, and also Instagram, I think it's at Cinder underscore Manons underscore studio. Or art. 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 art, I think it is. I'll it is indeed. But also we have open studio uh, every third Saturday of the month at Gasworks yep. that coincides with the farmer's market. So Great. that's a really good opportunity to come and talk to the artists and see the work. Over summer, perfect yep. time. Yep, yep. Marvellous, okay. Yeah. Well, we love having all the artists from Gasworks in. We'd be, we wouldn't... Uh, we, it was great to get some support from you guys uh, throughout the whole first uh, series that we're working on this show. So thanks so much. It's always a pleasure. Another thank Gaswork you. artist, Cinder Manons. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony. That's all for this week. If you'd like to contact us, just send us an email at ideas at studioemedia.com.au. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>